So in this video, we're going to continue to talk about ions and what we call the octet rule. Okay, so ions in particular, you know, it's not like atoms just lose or gain just a random number of, of electrons. What you notice, actually, there is actually a trend of how ion or how particular specific atoms, they tend to lose their electrons. All right. And so what we find is that atoms typically like to have electron configurations of one of a noble gas. Why? Well, one of the key f um, physical or chemical properties of noble gases is that they are inert or they're stable. All right. F um, noble gases typically do not react with anything. And the reason why it does not react with anything, all right, so let's look at neon, for example. The reason why it doesn't react with anything is because of its electron configuration, all right? And then you see the electron configuration of a neon or any type of noble gas, really. So um, let's look at argon just as well and compare and contrast, is that it has a full valence shell, all right? The valence shell, all right, consists of eight electrons. And when the valence shell consists of eight valence electrons, the likelihood that this atom is going to react with anything, it's, I mean, it will take a lot of energy just to get it to react with anything. So at this point, it, it reaches stability, okay? And this is also true when we look at krypton, right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. Once again, you have this valence shell that consists of eight electrons or a full shell. All right, and so what you'll find is that all the other atoms would typically lose or gain electrons to achieve such a valence shell, okay? So the rule of thumb with these atoms is that they either will lose or gain the, the least amount of electrons as possible so that they could get in the valence shell, all right? So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. All right, so like for example, let's, let's check sodium out, all right? Sodium with its 11 electrons, a neutral atom, when you write its electron configuration is as such. Okay, so in this valence shell here, we only have one electron, all right? So we know that um, elements typically want to have a valence electron, or I want to have an electron configuration as one of a, a noble gas, all right? And so with this one, sodium pretty much has a choice, all right? Will it lose one electron? Or will it gain seven electrons? Will it lose one electron to have a noble gas configuration as such of neon? Or will it gain seven electrons in order to have a, a electron configuration of one that's uh, as argon? As I said, the rule of thumb is, is that an atom will, will either lose or gain the least amount of electrons possible. Whatever is easier, right? And so if that's the case, then sodium, it'll be easier for sodium to lose one rather to gain seven. All right. Because finding seven electrons is a lot of work. Losing one is so much easier. And so if it loses its one electron, then it loses its last um, valence shell. So now it will have a valence shell. If it loses that electron, it will have a valence shell that's much like neon okay now since it lose it lost that electron so instead of having 11 electrons now it has 10 electrons compared to its 11 protons now you have a sodium that's a plus one charge and typically sodium really only has a plus one charge that's the only way you can become an ion all right anything else it's it just takes a lot a lot of energy okay um let's look at another example so let's say we have chlorine, right? Now, if you were to write out its electron configuration, 
you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. All right, this is the electric configuration of chlorine. Now, when we're looking at its valence shell, we see that here is its valence shell. All right, there are seven electrons in its valence shell. Now, to be full, it needs eight. So chlorine could do one of, one of two things, right? It could either lose all seven to have a noble gas configuration of that of neon, or it could gain an electron to have a noble gas configuration of argon. So now the question is, which one is, which one is easier, right? And that's what you kind of want to look at. It's like, which one is easier? Is it easier to lose seven or is it easier to gain one? And then for the case of chlorine, it's much easier just to gain one more. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So if it gains one more, all right, then when you write the, the electric configuration of this ion, all right, you're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now, in this case, you have eight valence electrons. Okay, now that you have eight valence electrons, chlorine, which typically has 17 protons, now in this case has 18 electrons because it gained one more. Okay, and so this is the reason why that when we write the chloride ion is a Cl negative one. Now, another way you could actually figure out um, what type of ion or how many electrons will an element would gain or lose, um, you could just simply look at the periodic table. Okay, so let's look, let's look at this periodic table here. And let's go, let's refer back to sodium and chlorine. All right, so you have sodium, which sits here, right? Um, element number 11. Okay, now we're trying to figure out if it's going to gain or lose electrons. So remember, when the element typically gains or loses electron, or atom gains or loses electron, it wants to have a configuration much like a noble gas. And so usually an atom will have two choices. It's either the noble gas that comes before it or the noble gas that comes after it. So when we look at sodium, it really has two choices. All right, it either could look like the one that comes before it, which is neon, or it could look like the one that comes after it, which is argon, okay? Now, and then you could just count how many steps it takes, right? So for neon, for sodium, just to get to neon, all right, all you have to do, just count back once. So if you go back once, bam, neon. So that's losing one electron, all right? So that's a plus one when they lose one electron. Or it could gain seven, and by gaining seven, we have to count up seven places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so if it gains seven electrons, then there's a negative seven charge. And it's like we said, which one is easier? All right, which one is will take less work? All right, in this case, as we mentioned before, it'll be much easier for the sodium just to lose one and to become a plus one charge. Let's look at the example of of um, chlorine. All right. Well, chlorine is situated here. Here's chlorine. Okay. Now we could look at the periodic table and to determine. Okay, when it becomes an ion, chlorine could either have one or two configurations: the noble gas before it or the noble gas after it. So it could look like the noble gas before it, which is neon. Or it could look like the noble gas that comes right after it, which is argon. And the question is, which one is easier, right? And so a, so if we're considering the noble gas that comes before it, neon, well, let's look. Chlorine has to go backwards, so it has to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it will have to lose seven electrons to become a plus seven charge, or... It could gain one more electron, all right, to have a plus one charge. Well, which one chlorine is going to do? The one that's easier, all right? And the one that's easier is just gaining 
Oh, I just realized I messed up. Uh, not plus one charge. It should be a, a negative one charge. I apologize for that. All right, you gain one more electron. It's a negative one charge. And so you notice if you, uh, it would do what's easier. And so it's easier for it to gain one more electron. So because it's easier to gain one more electron, um, then the chlorine ion will be a negative one. All right. So let's let's go through a couple examples so that hopefully you guys get a gist of this. And then we could kind of look at different elements from different uh, spaces of the periodic table. Um, yeah. Anyways, so let's let's jump at it. Um, so let's consider the element um, aluminum. All right. Let's consider the element aluminum. Now, aluminum. Let's let's write out its configuration so that way we could kind of look at it from a from different standpoints. So we have aluminum. Its configuration. It has thirteen electrons. It's one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p one. Okay. So here, when you're when you're looking at this. Um, we see that it has, here's this valence shell. All right. So it has three electrons in this valence shell. All right. When we're looking at this periodic table, so we can see that, um, aluminum could either one or two things could happen to aluminum. All right. Aluminum could lose electrons. All right. Lose how many electrons can it lose? Well, one, two, three. It could lose three electrons to have a plus three charge to look like neon to have the noble gas configuration of neon, or it could gain one, two, three, four, five, or it could gain five electrons to become a, a negative five charge to look like the noble gas argon. So now the question is, what is aluminum going to do? Well, once again, it's going to do what's easier and what's easier. It's easier to lose three than to gain five. Remember, atoms typically like to do what's the least amount of electrons uh, to transfer around. And so in this case, it's easier for it to lose a three than to gain five. And so now that simply means that now aluminum, if you write the electric configuration of the ion of aluminum, right aluminum plus three if it loses three electrons it loses it from its valence shell all right so this is gone and so then you will write 1s2 2s2 2p6 all right and here if you notice what noble gas has this configuration well the noble gas of neon all right so it looks like a noble gas all right um let's look at another example let me just kind of race or race <laughs> not right again. Um, let's kind of race what's what's here. All right. So let's say we look at let's try another main body element. All right. That was a little bit easier. Um, the, the transition elements. Um, it gets kind of tricky, so I'm not going to really touch those too much. All right, but let's look at the element selenium. All right, so if you write out the configuration selenium, we have it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s2, 3d10, 4p4. All right. And so we would kind of, if we were to pay attention how many valence electrons, we always pull from the highest energy level. So in this case, we see that we have six valence electrons. All right. We don't have the full eight. So now we're looking at, okay, well, selenium has basically two choices, two noble gases that you could choose from to look like. It either could look like um, the one before, which is argon. All right, that's the noble gas that comes before it. Or it could look like the noble gas that comes after it, which is krypton. All right, and so the, the question is, which one is, is easier? All right, well, before it, 
it will lose these six valence electrons, right? And so if it were to lose the six electrons, right, it will have a noble gas configuration of argon and it will have a charge of a plus six or it could gain two electrons to have a noble gas configuration of krypton and it will have a negative two charge. Which one is easier? Which one is less? Remember, atoms like to transfer um, the amount of electrons that is the least or the less amount, least amount, right? And so in this case, it'll be easier for it to gain two more electrons. All right. And so then that means selenium will now be a negative two charge. And so if you were to write the electric configuration of a negative two selenium, all right, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, a gain two electrons, so then it's 4p6. So this is the electron configuration of an of an ion that gained negative two, uh, or gained two electrons, okay? So now there are a couple of, um, of trends that we see here, all right? And so I just wanted to kind of um, point it out. Metals will typically lose electrons. So I showed you guys an example of sodium. I showed you guys an example of aluminum. All these are metals. Metals typically will lose their electrons. It's just easier for them to lose electrons. And it kind of makes sense when you think about its placement on the periodic table. You know, your metals are kind of like mostly here, right? And because your metals are mostly here, um, you see that, you know, here you're gonna have one valence electron. So I'd rather lose that one electron. This row has two valence electrons. It rather just lose the two electrons and other than try to gain six. Here has three valence electrons. So it's easier for it to lose the three other than gaining five, okay? Um, and then, well, you also find that non-metals, okay, they typically, when they become ions, they gain electrons. And that kind of makes sense. So here you have your non-metals here, um, if you have something like oxygen, where oxygen has six valence electrons, well, it's easier for it just to gain two than to lose all six. The halogens all have seven valence electrons, so it's easier just to gain one more than to lose all seven. All right, so it's all about trying to look like, you know, the infamous, you know, the, you know, these, these noble gases, eh, all the elements are just trying to have um, the configuration such as the noble gas, all right? And so I think when you kind of put that into perspective, all this really just, it makes sense, all right? Right, if what I was just saying, um, depending on the group, you can easily kind of identify um, what are the charges of those particular atoms, right? And so kind of just go in here, right? So remember, we just like I said earlier, all these alkali metals, right? They all have one valence electrons, okay? All of them, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, all of them have one valence electron. So that simply means that they all will lose one electron and becomes an ion, all right? And so if it becomes an ion this, in this case, then, then we could easily um, say that then they all will become a plus one charge when they become ion, lithium plus one, sodium plus one, potassium plus one, rubidium plus one, cesium plus one, francium plus one. All right, if I could get this up here. Okay, francium plus one. So all these, all the alkali metals will all become plus one charges. Um, hydrogen kind of goes both ways, but most times we see it as a plus one, okay? Now, what about um, the alkaline earth metals. Well, the alkaline earth metals all have two valence electrons, okay? And so you can imagine it's just easier for it to lose two electrons than rather gaining six to become like a noble gas. Well, if that's the case, if they all lose two electrons, then 
they will all have a charge of plus two when they become an ion. So beryllium would be a plus two. Magnesium would be a plus two. Calcium uh, will be a plus two. Strontium will be a plus two. Barium plus two. Radium plus two. So all the alkaline earth metals will all become a plus two charge, okay? Now jumping to the way to the other side of the periodic table. All right, so as we know, the halogens all have seven valence electrons. So it's much easier for it to gain one more electron than to lose um, seven electrons. And so if that's the case, then they all will have a negative one charge. So fluoride negative one, chloride ne negative one, bromide negative one. If you notice, I changed the name of them, and we'll talk about that in the next video or two whatever but just kind of follow with me now iodide um, um, ion astidide ion tenacide even though uh, we'll never we never seen an ion tenacine but I mean the, the the idea remains the same all these guys will have a negative one charge all right what about um, this group here when we talk about oxygen well, these guys have six valence electrons, all right? And so for the most part, they're going to gain two more electrons, all right? So if they're gaining two more electrons, something like oxygen will have a two negative charge. Same thing with sulfur, two negative charge. Selenium, two negative charge, all right? And we're gonna kind of hold it from there. <laughs> um, as you get lower, things kind of change a little bit. Um, as it's moving from metalloids to metals. And so um, you're not going to have much of this perfect trend. Um, and as you get to like group five, group four, you know, this whole idea of gaining and losing is not as um, concrete anymore. So like what I mean by that, well, uh, nitrogen, all right? Because this is a group five valence electrons, it would gain three electrons. This would be a neg three negative, right? That's a charge. Same thing with phosphorus. Now, arsenic and antimony, it really kind of depends, <laughs> all right? And then, but when you get down to bismuth, bismuth is a metal. Business and bismuth will actually lose electrons. And so that's why I said, you know, when you kind of get to this part of the edge, uh, this part of the periodic table, it, the, the, the trend is not as clear cut as we will definitely like it to be. Uh, but the ones that I pointed out is definitely the ones that you guys probably really, really would want to know. All right. And so alkali and alkali earth metals. All right. Alkali metals are always plus one. Alkaline earth metals are always plus two. Your halogens on the other side, always negative one. Um, oxygen, for most of it, it's negative two. And just make sure you remember the nitrogen and phosphorus are all negative threes. All right. And so as I, as I said, in this case, you could just look at the periodic table. And for some of these elements, you could definitely figure out um, what is the charge of the ion once it becomes an ion. All right.